So goodbye iPhone 11. It is the end of the line for the iPhone 11. Apple has officially dropped this from their website as a phone you could just go in there and buy new. Now I've been constantly recommending the iPhone 11 over the past couple of years. And the reason why I have done, done that is because it's been a pretty great phone. It's got a really comfortable ergonomic feel in the hand. It does have a pretty good dual camera on the rear. It was a lot cheaper than the other iPhones and bigger than the iPhone SE. So it's gonna be missed as a cheaper option. However, don't be too disappointed because I do believe that they might bring the iPhone 11 back in the form of maybe the 10R like body for the next SE. So let's see what happens there. Um, I'm pretty sure they can't keep that smaller SE design around forever. So we might see this resurrected in the future in the form of a future SE. So we'll just have to wait on that. But for now, but overall, let's take this brief video to kind of discuss where this phone stands now that it's not officially available. Is it something that's still worth buying here now that the 14s are out? It's gonna be even a cheaper phone to buy. Keep in mind that the iPhone 11 still features a 6.1 inch LCD display. So this display right here is still gonna give you very similar to the size of a brand new iPhone. Colors wise though, this is not an OLED. So you're gonna see the viewing angles are gonna be a little bit less nice than on the OLED. Also, the colors are not gonna be quite as, you know, punchy, vibrant, but they still look very good for an LCD. And this still retains a 60 Hertz panel unlike you know the pro versions which have a adaptive refresh rate of up to 120 hertz so the iphone 11 is still giving you similar size but and the notch is starting to look a little bit older although they did keep the iphone 12 around which has a similar notch so this notch is not going to be around much longer either they still have the 12 on board but they have the 13s the 14s and they all have those smaller notches now so this one is going to start to feel quite old in just a year or so so definitely that's something to note as well. Now I will say that is the body outdated? And the answer to that question is, I, I would say yes. Apple is going in the direction of the more squared bodies now. So they've had them around since 2020. It is 2022, we're going into 2023. This design is getting a little bit older with its you know, curved edges. Now I have to admit though, that I still really like the way this feels. Some people even think that the, the way this kind of feels in the hand feels more premium than the newer iPhones. And it's one of the reasons why they're keeping their, you know, iPhone 11 Pro Max or 11 Pros as well. I gotta say this phone still feels very thick and premium as well. So like, it's got like very strong aluminum edges here that don't feel anything close to cheap. So I do enjoy that. So that's a pretty good thing about this. This is a very durable iPhone still, even if you decide to pick this up. Now I will say too, that this phone does feature that A13 Bionic. So there's not many products in the lineup that really feature the A13 anymore. So this chip is starting to get a little bit dated in terms of, you know, Apple's just kind of going in the direction of pretty much everything has an A14, A15, something like that. Some of their, I think their tablets still might have an A13, but you know, A13 Bionic has 3.7 gigabytes of RAM on here, 2.66 gigahertz. I never really found this chip to be slow whatsoever. And honestly, ever since like the A12, I've been feeling like every chip just feels about the same. You just see better benchmarks and you see slightly better performance. What really changed the game for the performance, I feel like was the 120 Hertz. So chip wise, this is still pretty strong, but I will say that I found the iPhone 11 now starts to warm up a little bit when I do push it to the extremes. It didn't really do that much. And running this iOS 16 beta right here, which official is launching today, I should be launching a video later today. So be subscribed for that. But running this iOS 16 version, it did warm up quite a bit. Again, this is beta software that could be why. But overall, I gotta say, finding it to get a little bit more warm than I usually would have found this iPhone 11 to get warm in the past. Now, another reason why they're basically saying goodbye to the iPhone 11 is because this camera has been upgraded three times already. We had the iPhone 12 camera upgrade, wasn't major upgrades to that phone, but then we had the iPhone 13, slightly more upgrades, and everybody's saying the 14 is exactly the same as the 12 or the 13, and it basically is, but there is a slight difference in the apertures and the cameras giving the 14 a little bit better low light performance. Now, this was one of those phones that introduced night mode, so definitely 
this one is gonna be still pretty good. And I honestly think the iPhone 11 just basically has the base version of those camera upgrades that came with the iPhone 12, 13, and now 14. So this is like just the base entry version. And I feel like it's still very good. Like I can make videos on here in 4K 60. No one would know that I'm using an iPhone 11 to film these videos. That's how good the camera still is. So if you're looking for a secondhand phone and you want it for video and photo, I think the iPhone 11 blows away a lot of Android devices in its segment, definitely. It doesn't beat them in other areas, but when it comes to video and camera, I would pick this all day, every day. The photos on the front, they do great job with skin tones. When you back it out, they do very well. When you do video, they also do very well. So I just absolutely still love the cameras on the iPhone 11. There's really nothing wrong with them. They just got better and better as the years went on. The thing is funny, the funny thing too, is that there's still dual cameras on the brand new 14 three years later. They still have not introduced a triple camera for the regular iPhones. They probably could have went quad cameras on the pros and went triple here on the bases, but they're still at the dual setup, even on the 14 and 14 plus. Now when it comes to, ooh, watch it. When it comes to the battery life, you know, I haven't really been using this phone much, so I still got the 100% capacity. Just when you're buying the, you know, iPhone 11, look out for some battery life savings. You're gonna wanna make sure that you don't get this phone with like 83 capacity. Ask the person if you're buying it used, Make sure it's not, you know, below like 85% because then the battery doesn't really last quite as long throughout the day. So battery life, I think has held up extremely well for the iPhone 11. This phone never really let me down. It was one of those phones I recommended constantly for being a good price with really good battery life. So iPhone 11 with that LCD display does very well, fares very well in the battery department. It was never disappointing here. So the last thing I wanna mention is the lack of 5G. Now the iPhone 11 will not give you 5G. It does not give you the fastest charging out there and doesn't have the latest and greatest Wi-Fi speeds, but they're still pretty good nonetheless. In addition, the iPhone 11 is not going to be, you know, your best overall signal strength on in an iPhone. So it's really just a really good phone overall for its kind of durability, really good cameras, good size screen for good price. Other than that, I don't really see a lot of people wanting to pick one of these up unless you're just trying to try out iPhone for the first time and you don't really care about 5G. It's not really a big thing for you just yet. This could be a solid couple year option or a side phone or maybe a phone you pass on to somebody else. Really good option for that. But I think we're getting to the point where it's time to say goodbye to the iPhone 11. It's kind of insane how it feels like well, we were just talking about this yesterday. It's time just going so fast and we're already saying goodbye to a classic, you know, beast here in the iPhone 11. That doesn't mean I'm not going to cover it no more. I will be covering this phone in the future as it still is supported. It's got a couple years left of software support. And by the way, we didn't really mention software that much. The phone still has, you know, latest and greatest software, which is going to give you the same basic experience, which is why a lot of people think iPhones all feel the same because they all run basically the same software. It's more about the hardware, though, that you got to pay attention to. We're saying goodbye today. And if you guys want to see anything else going forward, like some comparisons to the iPhone 14s, the 14 Pros, and you know maybe even the 14 Plus, because you want to upgrade this phone, let me know down below in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up. I'll catch you all in the next upcoming video. Nick here. Be sure to be well. And peace.